Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about ground bonding your DIY hot tub or plunge pool. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I was asked this week about ground bonding for a DIY hot tub. And I searched my site, I hadn't actually written an article or made a video, so hence I'm making the video now and I'll put a link to the article underneath this video as well. Now, before I get going, always a great opportunity to say please do subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I do two long form videos just like this every single week, a whole bunch of shorts. Everything on my channel focuses on DIY hot tubs, plunge pools and parts and, and pretty much everything in between. So what is ground bonding? Well, ground bonding is often called bonding or earthing or grounding. It's the process in which we will connect our DIY hot tubs or plunge pools, the structure of this is, to the earth. The whole idea of ground bonding is that we create a safety measure so that electricity is able to find the easiest route to ground and that will be through the safety loop or the ground bonding that we've put in place. Now this ground bonding will help us against static, it will help us against lightning strikes, and it will help with any electrical faults where there's a short as well. So the whole idea is that it's protecting us and it's protecting the equipment from damage caused by too much electrical current. Now I'm trying to keep things nice and simple on this video so if you are an expert in this and you disagree with any of my points as always please do hit me up in the comments and make sure that everybody knows what I've said incorrectly. Hopefully I'm not saying anything incorrectly on this video but if you are an expert in ground bonding please do feel free to hit me up in the comments with anything that I've got not quite right. So how do we actually ground bond our hot tubs or plunge pools. Well, we're actually gonna start with the, the slab that we're gonna pour itself. So the first things first, when you put your metal rebar or your mesh into the slab, you're gonna to want to connect this to your grounding spike. Now your grounding spike is normally made of copper and it's normally driven into the ground at least eight feet. So it's a, a big long copper stake that you are gonna hammer into the ground as deep as you can. And as I said, it's normally around eight feet deep that you're gonna do this. With your actual slab, the best practice is to have at least four points of contact with your grounding rod or rods. To do that, you're gonna use a minimum of a six gauge wire, so that's a number six gauge wire, and again, it's gonna be a copper wire that you're doing. The whole idea here is that we're gonna create the route to ground with the least amount of resistance because electricity will always take the route with the least amount of resistance, so our grounding loop, to be effective, has to be that. So from our slab, we're then gonna connect up again through any of the vertical rebar with that six gauge wire so everything is interconnected and it's all leading back to your driven in ground rods. Now, even when your structure is in place, you're also gonna connect any of the electrical equipment as well. So all of the control room, electrical parts, anything that is metal should be connected to your ground loop. Things like pumps will have a grounding screw on them. Likewise, spar packs, heaters, all of these will have external grounding screws and you're just connecting from those screws onto your loop, very straightforward, but it is uh, an effective means of doing this. How do we test? Well, with a multimeter, a good ground loop will have a resistance of 25 ohms or less. Any more than that, and it's not as effective, so you really need to get that resistance of the grounding loop down to 25 ohms or less. How do you know if a grounding loop is actually required 
for your build when you need to check your local codes because this does vary very much from city to city, state to state. I've seen a lot on the swimming pool side where it's mandatory. On the hot tub side, it tends to be a bit more of a gray area. So it does vary an awful lot between, as I said, city to city, state to state. So if you're not sure, do check with your local planning office to make sure that you are following the correct codes. So really it sounds complicated, but it's a pretty straightforward process. Drive that eight foot copper rod into the ground, connect everything that's metal together on a loop with multiple points using a six gauge wire and check that you've then got a resistance that's less than 25 ohms and there you have it, grounding loop done. Hopefully you found this short video useful. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions. If I've missed anything out, hit me up in the comments and if I've got anything wrong, let me know as well. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.